So today I'm going to share my experience using the Huawei Mate 20 Pro in 2023. It's a phone I've been using on and off for the last couple of weeks. It's a phone that was also released all the way back in October of 2018. So it's pushing, what, four and a half years old. So I've been using it, like I said, on and off for a couple of weeks. Here is my experience using the Mate 20 Pro and if it's worth buying in 2023. Let's talk about the design of the Mate 20 Pro. It's an all glass design. You've got Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and also on the back of the phone. The display is a 6.39 inch Quad HD display, which is an OLED display as well, with pretty minimal bezels all around, including the chin. There is an iPhone size notch at the top, which I'll discuss a little bit more in a minute. But overall, the display of the Mate 20 Pro is really nice. It's a slightly curved display, very much like the P30 Pro, curving over the edges ever so slightly, but not too much. And overall, like I said, the display is really, really nice. Everything looks really crisp. Photos come out really sharp on the display as does video especially when you can up the resolution watching videos on youtube or something like that it does support hdr content as well so you get really nice high quality video and the contrast of the display being an oled display is going to be really really nice as well and that is something that i have found to be the case with the mate 20 pros display on the bottom of the phone you get your sim tray usb-c charging port and microphones at the top of the phone you get an ir blaster and another microphone the left of the phone is completely clean and then on the right you get your volume rocker and coloured power button as well. Also in the display you get an in-display fingerprint scanner which was introduced to the Mate 20 Pro. Of course the P20 Pro have the capacity of fingerprint on the bottom. It is nice and responsive except I bought this third party screen protector so now the fingerprint sensor just doesn't work at all. But when I didn't have it on there it was absolutely fine, no problems. And then back to that notch at the top of the display, it is a Face ID kind of setup similar to what was introduced to the iPhones with the dot projectors, flood illuminators and all that sort of stuff for secure face unlocking. Weirdly, the Mate 20 Pro is the only phone to actually have all of those advanced sensors. When they moved onto the P30 Pro, they removed all of that to just a dewdrop display, so no face ID or anything like that. So that was something that was a bit strange. I feel like it was kind of a, an experiment to see how people responded to it. Please excuse my dog barking, but yeah. Overall, the front of the display of the Mate 20 Pro is really, really nice. So overall, I really like the design of the Mate 20 Pro. I've got it in emerald green that is also, of course, available in that really nice twilight color that was introduced on the P20 Pro. There's also black and a blue color as well. I actually really like this emerald green color. I'm glad I picked it. Although I didn't really have much choice because the others were out of stock. But nevertheless, I think the green is really, really nice. And as for the performance of the Mate 20 Pro, you get the same Kirin 980 processor that was found in the Huawei P30 Pro. So that is, of course, Huawei's in-house processor. And still, in 2023, performance has been absolutely fine. Geekbench scores are about on par with sort of mid-range chips of today. So it is absolutely fine. It still performs really well. I've had no stutters or anything like that. Apps open really quickly. There's no delays and it's backed by six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, expandable by Huawei's proprietary nano memory card. How available they are at the moment, I don't know, I haven't really looked, but 128 gigabytes is still plenty of storage for me personally anyway. But like I say, everything runs really smoothly. Of course, being an old phone, it's not got the most up-to-date software. It's running Android 10 with Huawei's EMUI version 12.0 on top. So Huawei is keeping the phone slightly up to date with EMUI updates, but it is running older Android software as well. So again, something to bear in mind if you're considering buying the Mate 20 Pro. And as for the battery, you get a large 4,200 milliamp hour battery, which is the same as what was found on the P30 Pro as well. It also supports the same 40 watt charging. You also get wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, which was introduced to the Mate 20 Pro. So you get loads of premium features on the Mate 20 Pro, which of course being released as a flagship phone, it's still got flagship features even in 2023. So let's lastly talk about the cameras of the Mate 20 Pro. It's a triple camera setup consisting of a 40 megapixel f1.8 primary camera, a 20 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and then an eight megapixel f2.4 telephoto camera with three times optical zoom. So of course it doesn't get the five times optical zoom of the P30 Pro, it's just got the three times of what you found on the regular P30. 
but overall photo quality from the Mate 20 Pro are really, really good. AI mode was toned down considerably from the P20 Pro to the Mate 20 Pro. I did find the P20 Pro's AI mode to be completely over the top, but it's nice to see that it was toned down with the Mate 20 Pro and photos come out with loads of detail, nice natural color. Been down to that 10 megapixels, so four in one pixel binning that was introduced to the P20 Pro as well. And then you get that higher resolution 20 megapixel ultra wide camera, which is a really refreshing thing to use over the really budget eight megapixel ultra wide and other budget devices that I've used and that I'm really not a fan of. Those you would lose a lot of detail around the edges of the photo and just detail in general was considerably lower than what you find on this phone. 20 megapixels, plenty of resolution. Of course, it's still got that narrow f2.2 aperture. So of course, in lower light situations, the quality has gone drop quite considerably. But during the day, the photos have been absolutely fine. And then of course, you get that eight megapixel telephoto camera at f2.4. These are upscaled to 10 megapixels as well with the help of the main camera. And the three times optical photos are again, really, really good. There's not too much of a color shift when switching between each of the lenses. That is something that is refreshing as well and something that you do find with other budget Android devices. So overall, the camera is still really, really great on the Mate 20 Pro. Video-wise, it tops out at 4K, but video isn't the best. I mean, it'll do, it's fine for home movies of your pets and the kids. Something that I say in pretty much all of my videos when it comes to budget phone video quality, and it's definitely the case here on the Mate 20 Pro. It's not gonna be something that you're gonna write home about, but it's absolutely fine. Detail is pretty good, and you can, of course, switch to all of those other lenses as well for a wider or a more zoomed in shot with your videos. There is also a 24 megapixel f2.0 selfie camera on the Mate 20 Pro. This supports HDR and can shoot 1080p video. The photos from this camera I have found to be all right. Chinese phone brands were always known for adding the kind of beauty effects to smooth out your skin. This is still evident in the photos from the Mate 20 Pro selfie camera, but you can obviously edit that in post. But overall, the selfie camera photos are okay. They're not the best for me personally, but for some people, they'll be absolutely fine. And then of course, there is a portrait mode on the selfie camera as well, which uses software to detect the background and blur that out for you in your portrait shots. And this does a pretty good job more complicated things like bits of hair and stuff like that it might struggle with. But that's not limited to, of course, the Mate 20 Pro. Plenty of other phones have that problem as well. So that's just the selfie camera of the Mate 20 Pro. Does the job, but it's not the best on the market, but you can expect it being four and a half years old. Portrait mode is also pretty good on the Mate 20 Pro, of course, with the help of those other lenses to gather depth information. You do get a pretty good subject separation on your portrait shots. But overall, I have found that the photo quality on the Mate 20 Pro isn't as good as the P30 Pro, but then that kind of goes without saying, considering that's what, six months more of better optics and software optimization and processing and all that sort of stuff. But overall, it's still a pretty decent camera. I have noticed the quality does drop when lighting is reduced. There is a night mode as well, again, found on the P20 Pro and P30 Pro. That just helps to brighten and sharpen the images as well for a slightly better quality photo in lower light situations. So that's my quick look at the Mate 20 Pro in 2023. It's still a really good phone to use today, but of course software updates is where it does falter a little bit, but then other flagships have that same problem as well. I am considering comparing the Mate 20 Pro to the Google Pixel 4 XL, a phone that I've done a single video on, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. But the Pixel 4 XL is running the new Android 13, something that the Mate 20 Pro is definitely not and will definitely not be using. So that's something that I'm looking at comparing. If you're gonna be interested, be sure to subscribe to the channel to check that out and check out some of my other videos of old flagship devices as well. I've got plenty more on my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.